Today on Community Cooking, we have guest chef Vince Giuliano in the kitchen with us cooking up some authentic Italian cuisine. We're making a bruschetta pomodoro that'll have your mouth watering and a penny asparagi with grilled chicken you won't want to miss. We're cooking with some of the best chefs from right here in our own community. So grab a seat, sit back and relax because we have another great meal coming at you in under 30 minutes. This is your Community Cooking. I'm your host, Maria Prekicis, and I'm excited to have an Italian in the house, although I'm Greek, Vince Giuliano. Welcome. Thanks, Maria. Thanks for having me. We, you know, I love Italian cooking. Don't tell my great grandparents, but I love it. And we're making some cool things today. Today, we're going to be doing bruschetta pomodoro, and we're also going to be doing a little penne asparagi. 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 I got close. Asparagi. You have to say it it's like that. It's not an easy word to pronounce. It's, that's why we have you, the Italian, here. Tell me about the ingredients for each. So for the bruschetta pomodoro, first we're going to do tomatoes, basil, some minced garlic, extra virgin olive oil, and some kosher salt. Okay. Mix those together. Usually you'd refrigerate them for a couple hours and then put them on, but of course today we have, don't have the time that we would usually. Um, we're going to grill up some bread, put the salsa on top of the bread. Okay. Now, and that is the biggest loaf of bread I've seen in a long time. I love it. Yes, it's a, it's a nice big loaf of bread from my uncle's bakery down the street at Giuliano's. Oh, we love that. All right, and the chicken, asparagi. The penne asparagi is a perfect light summer's dish. It's got penne pasta, tomatoes, asparagus, mushrooms, the grilled chicken, and like a garlic olive oil sauce. We like light. I'm not a big cream sauce person, so thank you for that. You got the memo. It's my pleasure. So we're going to start with the bruschetta. And what kind of bread is that? Can you use any bread? Any bread you want. I prefer bread that's really crusty on the outside and soft on the inside. This bread is called a pane rustica. So it's just a rustic, uh, rustic country bread, basically. I, and I've heard of that many times. I've eaten that. Us Greeks like our carbs, just like you yes, Italians. Yes, we do. All right, so what should we get started with? Um, I like to start with the bruschetta. First, we're going to mince up the basil. We, we want to mince up the basil first because if we cut up our, our tomatoes, they make the cutting board all dirty. They do. <laughs> That's my. It gets all why wet. Why you do that it's first? Not, it's not easy. <laughs> it's not easy to mince up the other ingredients. <laughs> and can so, I just say that is one chef's knife? It's it's big. Yeah, we, we like we like our knives big. I love it. And you so, can tell you've been doing. You it's know, not his first rodeo here. And the cool part about the bruschetta is that, as we all know, that bruschetta is kind of that tomato salsa. Mm -hmm. Bruschetta literally means grilled bread. So in Italian, oh, <laughs> it just means grilled bread. Now, by putting the pomodoro at the end, now it's grilled bread with like a tomato salsa. So you could do lots okay. of different things. You could do um, bruschetta ai funghi, which is bruschetta or grilled bread with sautéed mushrooms. You could do grilled bread with um, roasted peppers. You could do grilled bread with sausage. Really, whatever you would like. Um, but like I said. Us, us here on the, uh, the West Coast, or I should just say America for that matter. Yeah. We like to say bruschetta pomodoro, and everyone knows it as the tomato sauce. And it's the red, because a lot of times you're in a restaurant, and you're like, oh, I'll have the bruschetta. Well, you look at the menu, because it's not necessarily with the tomatoes you're and right. basil. You're right. It might be something else. You might get a little secret choice surprise. Not in there. a Gaetano. <laughs> this is very true. Well, and let's talk about Gaetano's, your family restaurant. It yes. is well, well known. It's been around for 23 years. Uh, I was, uh, I was, it was 1993 when you started, so I was a young kid then. I won't <laughs> say how old I was. We won't make you. Thank we, you. We will keep that a secret. But uh, yeah, my parents started it, my mom and dad. Um, so basically, they, my dad came from Giuliano's Delicatessa, and that's their last name. If, I mean, you've already said that a couple times, I think. I'm getting it down. You are. You got the Giuliano now. Um, so he came from Giuliano's. We started Gaetano's, and here we are 23 years later. My sister, my brother-in-law, and I run the business with the help of a lot of great people. I love it. And so for the tomatoes, Romas, take the tops off and uh, slice them lengthwise and then into small pieces because you don't want a big chunk of tomato falling off the bruschetta, in my humble opinion. Exactly. 
Now, as far as, I mean, you know this being Greek, but we don't like to waste anything. No. So we're going to, even <laughs> these tops. Our plates are clean, and even I cut the tops. These tops, we're going to go ahead and cut around there, too. Yep. So we can get every I do that. nook and cranny of that tomato. You know what I mean? My sister's dog, weirdly enough, likes tomatoes. So one of the tops goes to the dog, and the rest go in the recipe. There you go. There you go. That's a good way of using them. Yeah, no, we... Plus, we don't like any waste on our plates, yeah, which is exactly. good and bad, unfortunately. <laughs> so there is another restaurant that you guys started in 2015. We did, yeah. My, my, uh, once again, my brother-in-law, my sister, and I, we started Betulino Kitchen in 2015. It's on the border of Redondo and Torrance. Okay. It's, uh, it's on Palos Verdes Boulevard. And we focus, you know, Gaetano's is more of the traditional Italian okay, food. Okay, what you would think when you go in and there's, yeah. you know, happy faces and, you know, dark-haired well, We have happy people. faces, too, well, I was going to say, you have happy faces. I'm trying to just, you know, you walk in, you're like, this is an Italian restaurant. The menu is slightly different. So, you know, Gaetano's is more your chicken parmesan, spaghetti meatballs, stuff okay. like that. Betolino, we're doing all handmade pastas. Uh, everything's freshly prepared there. Um, we're doing lots of risottos with lobster, and we've got Ooh, yum. yeah, we've got a lot of great dishes. So we've got our okay. tomatoes, our, our minced basil. Now we're gonna, just going to put a little bit of garlic, and the recipe is on your screen. I'm sure you can see. Yes. A uh, little bit of extra virgin olive oil. I love this because it's so easy. We yeah. like easy in this kitchen. Want to go to mix it up? I would love to mix it up. Put a little bit of salt. All righty. Oh, the garlic. Who doesn't love garlic? I like lots. I used to tease people. I said I had it in my, you know, bottle growing up. Not quite, but. <laughs> All right, so that's mixed, ready for the bread, but we have to get the bread ready. Yes, we do. So basically, we're going to go ahead and turn our pan on, which has already been turned on. Let's put it a little bit warmer here. I'm grabbing. Oh, my Lord. You could do curls with this thing. Yeah, Holy cow. It's big. It is big. Okay, that so. That is beautiful. Let's cut it on your board, since your board is okay. a little bit on, more on the dry side. I'm just going to go ahead and. Wipe that off. All right, straight down the center. Straight down the center. Now it's easier if you can use a knife that's got a serrated edge. Okay. This knife. It's this is knife a is sharp knife. though. Yeah. How do you like your bread? Do you like it thick cut? I like or it kind of thin like that. You like it thin like Just this? Just to you know make you work for it, since we don't have a serrated knife. <laughs> that is. It's a little bit harder. Like it's a little bit harder when it's thin, but I can you, work with you it. You do it however you Just like. We you, can Maria. do some thin, some thick. Okay. I love so it. So now we'll put a little bit of olive oil on it. If you don't okay. mind, just grabbing that olive oil. I for took us. it away. Now we'll put it back on. Perfect. All right. So we could just go ahead and drizzle right a little. Here, drizzle a little bit on there. Yum. I love olive oil. You want some more? We got some olive oil right there. You want to put we some more? We do. On? Sure. Sure. Okay, pop it off. Okay. <laughs> That's facial reasoning. There. Yes. <laughs> so. Would you like to do the honors? Uh, no, you're going to be drizzling All for right, me. Got How's it. that? I'll let you drizzle. So a fair amount. Yeah, we like olive oil. Definitely we like do. our olive oil. So a little bit of that. We've got okay. our warm, pan. ready to go pan. I'm just going to put a little salt on there. I love actually just eating bread with butter and salt. Oh, it's so good. It's so yummy. And then I'm going to turn it over just like that. All right. So and we'll I love the little, little griddle pan. It doesn't have to go in the oven. So many people toast it. I think this is actually maybe better if you have a lot going on and you don't have to tend to your oven all the time. Yeah, I know. You're right it's here already cooking. It's so. perfect. If you have a grill uh, outside, that's going to be better. Um, oh. You're going to get more flavor from the char. But, you know, um, this works. This absolutely works. And a lot of people do enjoy the toast as well, but it's all what your preference is. And then a couple minutes per side? A couple minutes per side, and that's all she takes. All right, and now um, should we throw love penne? Yes. So our pasta has been our pasta water. I'm moving right along. How do you like that? Because I'm hungry. Let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. Okay, first. It's boiling, so we want to put some salt in there. So you want to put some salt in your pasta water when it's boiling. Okay. That way it, it evaporates and mixes in a little bit So you bit want better. to wait till it's boiling to add it? Because I usually, sometimes I add it beforehand and I'm never sure. It doesn't work out so well okay. that way. When it's boiling, it comes out a little bit better. And now, you don't put 
any oil in the pasta. That's another, some people, if you want it it's slippery. It's kind of a but myth. Yeah, it's, a, it's definitely a myth as far as putting, <laughs> putting oil on the pasta. What you can do is you can cook the pasta in the water and then drain it and then put a little, put a little olive oil on okay. it so, so it doesn't separate. That's if you were going to prepare it, you know, a lot for the future. But you really don't need to put oil in the in the, uh, well, especially pot. when it's penne. Sometimes spaghetti or angel hair might stick together a little, but I, I like your idea of putting a little after. Exactly. And some people rinse, which I don't, and I know that we're going to use some of the starchy water later too. Yes, but for the sauce. Um, Italians are really big on salting their water, where you know, when you taste this water, the pasta water should taste kind of like the Mediterranean Sea, they say. See? So <laughs> Makes perfect sense. Yeah, I'm just going to get a little... Yeah, we're good. I do not taste my water. I just wing it, but I will now. You, you should, yeah. I mean, give, give it as much salt as you like. All right, so it's not quite boiling. Okay, well, we can wait a minute while the bread's cooking and talk. So you went to culinary school. Was it, did you have any choice growing up in a restaurant? <laughs> growing up in a restaurant, I did have a choice, and, and my parents were really vocal about do what you want to do. Um, That's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. But working at the restaurant, I fell in love with it. And I fell in love with working with people and the food. Um, so I've always enjoyed it. Yeah. I went off to culinary school back in 2010. I uh, went to Italy for a couple months. It was a good four months and worked for a couple restaurants. Got to learn a lot of good stuff. Met a lot of great people. Um, one, of the, one, of the, one of my teachers is now working with us at Bettolino. He's the chef. It doesn't get much better than that. Yeah, it's a unique, it's a unique relationship we have. So, and I think he's going to be uh, on one of these shows as well. Oh, that would be great. Yeah, so we're, we're looking forward to that. Um, but yeah, all together, it's been a family family business since 1952 with Giuliano's and then coupling into Gaetano's and now Bettolino. So yeah, we've, we've been in the food business for a while. It's what we know. It's what we enjoy. See, and, well, and when you enjoy it, and I think too, when you see your parents enjoying themselves in a business, why, you know, I mean, it just, it's a nice progression. I think so, too. Yeah, but absolutely. They sound like very cool parents, though, because they said, do whatever. Do whatever you want. Maybe crossing their fingers going, but hopefully he will. I think they did. <laughs> <laughs> Which is typical. Yeah, typical. our mom's always called my sister and I uh, at her retirement plan. Yeah. Oh, of so, course. So I... it worked out for her, and, and now she is basically retired. So we run the reins, my sister and my brother-in-law and I. It's like the 10th time I've mentioned them, but, I've, you know, they're, they're big parts of we, uh, uh, the business. <laughs> The, us Mediterraneans are, and like a lot of ethnic cultures, we're very tight with our families. Yes. And I, I, it's just fabulous. I couldn't ask for anything better. It's, it's, a, it's a family of love. All we're right. ready for the pasta. Pasta in the boiling water. And you like to keep it uh, a little al dente. Yes. Yes, we do. Thank you. Um, I'll clean up behind you. That's easy. So, yes, we like to cook it al dente. And then we're really big on taking the pasta out under al dente and putting it into the pasta sauce. So the sauce absorbs into the pasta. So basically every bite you take, you're gonna taste a little bit of the sauce in the pasta. Well, see so many people will serve spaghetti or any type of pasta. Oh look, that's beautiful as you turn oh, that nice. over. And they just add it on top, but it makes perfect sense to cook it in it because you wanna have it all absorb and marry together. Especially a red sauce. Okay, good it, to know. It kills me when I see just a plate of white pasta and sauce on top. Yeah. <laughs> you got to take that pasta and cook it in the sauce for a couple minutes okay. so that all that sauce absorbs into the pasta and every bite's going to be unique. Um, so in this situation, too, we're going to take a little bit of that pasta water, put it into the saute pan, and then we're going to create the, okay. the, the sauce. Well, while our bread finishes up and our pasta cooks, we're going to take a quick break, but don't go anywhere. We're going to be back in 60 seconds with the asparagi penne pasta, as well as everything else. Can't wait. When the earth shakes, the ground moves, and things start to fall, you'll ask yourself, how prepared or unprepared are you? Have you removed objects from over the bed and over your head? anchored your possessions securely to the wall. It won't be a pain, and you're not doing it in vain. Are your emergency kits packed? What about your family, your friends? Do they know what to do, how to get in touch, and where to meet? Do you know how to drop, cover, and hold on, covering your head and neck? What if you're outside? 
or in a car. After the shaking stops, look around. Figure out what to do. Stay away from damaged areas. Turn on a radio. Reach out for help. And if you're trapped, do not move about. Stay calm. Only shout as a last resort. Once everything and everyone is safe, get prepared. An aftershock could be on its way. So before the earth shakes, the ground moves, and things start to fall, get prepared. Make a plan. Practice what you know, because an earthquake can happen anytime, anywhere. You never know. America's Preparathon. Be smart. Take part. Prepare. Welcome back to Community Cooking. If you're just joining us, it is just all about Italian today, which I love. We just finished taking our bread off the griddle. The pasta is almost ready. Vince Giuliano is here. And we're ready to do the pasta asparage penne with chicken or some combination of that. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Thank you, Maria. So first we're going to start cooking up the chicken because that's going to take a little bit longer. We've okay. got our penne pasta, which is basically done. It's a little bit under al dente. And we want it to be a, a little bit under al dente because we want uh, to cook that pasta in the sauce. Yes. Like the was, huge tip if you missed it. Do not put your red sauce on top of your pasta. Cook it together. So, so on that chicken, it's already been marinated slightly. Put a little bit of olive oil on the pan. Okay. I'm going to put a little bit of rosemary on top of here. This is minced rosemary. We love the rosemary on the chicken. And a little bit of salt. All right. And it's a chicken breast that you butterflied. Yes, it is butterflied. Did you uh, pound it out a little, or is it just? We pound it out a little bit so that it's uh, a little bit more thin. Doesn't take as long to cook. Look at that. There's the butterfly. There's the butterfly. I'm going to cook it on this side. Okay. And I love chicken breast. I mean, it's so healthy. As long as you don't overcook it, which I'm assuming with your experience and family restaurants, no, we're going to be no, good. No overcooking. <laughs> I'm just thinking. But if we do overcook it, it's better than undercooking it. That's yes, for sure, this right? is true. Oh, look at sizzling. And you want a pretty hot pan for this. Yes, we do. I like to go... There's eight levels here. We're going yep. number seven. So, so not the not the highest, but the pretty still darn there. hot. Yeah. So we're gonna okay. cook that. Let that cook, and at the same time, we're gonna start our uh, asparagi sauce. Okay. We'll put a little bit of olive oil in here. First, we're gonna go ahead and brown some of the garlic. Okay. Always have to have big chunks of garlic. Yes. Tomatoes, mushrooms. We're gonna take some mushrooms and tomatoes. How do you want the tomatoes done? Uh, I have a knife, don't you know? Cut out any way you want. <laughs> Seriously, any way you Small want. Small like the bruschetta? No, you, a little bit bigger. Okay. A little bit bigger. I'll do them in thirds then this way. So I am the salad we're cutting, maker in We're our cutting house. up these vegetables slightly larger than right. you would usually because and they are going to shrink. Any type of mushroom, what kind are we using today? This is a cremini mushroom yep. or a baby portobello. We're also going to get that fresh asparagus. Okay. Alrighty. So mushrooms are good. Garlic I love mushrooms. Brown. But we can use any type of mushroom? Um, yeah, we're going to go Just ahead and about. I mean, basically, I yeah, I mean, any one you want. Thank Tomatoes you. are chopped for you, thank Chef. Thank you, thank you. I'm here to help. The asparagus, we're just going to kind of give it a nice little small dice, so nothing big. I love, you know, you can eat raw asparagus, by the way. Yeah, it's a, delicious. It's really yummy. It's delicious. Let this cook up a little bit. So, oil in the pan, heat it up before you put everything in. Oil, garlic, garlic's brown, start putting your vegetables in. Okay. So right here we've got our mushrooms and our asparagus. Uh, my favorite part, we put the tomatoes in after once we get it right. really, really hot because I love hearing that sizzle. All right, I'm going to have you move that spaghetti pot right here for me. If Absolutely. You mind. These are good to go. All right, there, we, there we go. A little bit of tomatoes. And you add the tomatoes pretty early on. I like the tomatoes cooked. Yep. I'm not the biggest fan of when the tomatoes are hard. For the bruschetta, it's fine, but for, yep. you know, when you're cooking tomatoes, I like them to be a little bit on the softer side. Okay. They are not going to be as red colored as they Which are and okay as bright as they are, but that's perfectly fine. Because they're going to taste. Now exactly. we're putting in a this little... This is a little chicken stock. 
Okay, so the chicken stock is super simple. You can get it at your store. We make ours with a little bit of chicken bones, carrots, onions, and celery, just with a ton of water. Fresh from scratch. But yeah, you can cook them any way you'd like, really. For so a second. How's this looking? The chicken. Chicken Beautiful. is coming out okay. I'm gonna put it up slightly higher. Just now one thing we have to remember too is that in Italy they don't do chicken in their pasta. I think for, for us in the South Bay, Los Angeles, we're, we're familiar with chicken in the pasta and it's kind of a meal. They're really big on their pasta having no chicken at all in there. Really? Yeah, it's all just usually vegetarian pastas or there might be some type of meat, like a lamb ragu or a, a bolognese sauce, something like that. We like the chicken because, first off, it's light, it's healthy. <laughs> Protein. People, people uh, are obsessed with chicken here in California. We are really into it. And, you know, it's a nice, it's a perfect uh, plate, I think. I mean, it works out all real nicely. Ooh, we are cooking. Oh, we can smell the garlic. We love it. And I like just using your griddle pan. It's easy. It really is easy. Gives I mean, it the nice... The nice lines, like you're out barbecuing. Exactly. It looks pretty, which is key. People like the lines. I love seeing those lines. Oh, I do too. I do too. When we just bake it in the oven, all you see is just like a nice nothing, just white. <laughs> and I, you know, but it you want to see. Good. It does taste good, but you want to see those lines. I love it. So a couple, a few minutes per side. Now you covered the veggies at first. Now they're uncovered. Just they are uncovered because I want to go ahead and reduce the sauce okay. a little bit with the with the pan or the, excuse me the lid still yeah. on. It's not reducing and the liquids are just staying within there. It's slightly hot, so I'm going to take it off. I think the sauce is about done right here. Can you guys I see love that? It. I love that. That is the sauce, by the way. Yeah. So I like chunky sauce like that. At this point, I think it's time we can go ahead and add our pasta. Okay. And as we talked about earlier, if you're just joining us, um, we don't rinse. No rinsing. We just take it out of the pot. And then it's hot. So many times you, people rinse pasta and it, I don't care the hottest water, it's not going to be as hot as boiling water that just this got off true. the stove. And it's so colorful. So colorful. So how do you go between the two restaurants? You're busy. I'm busy, yeah. But you know, it's... <laughs> It's, it's, uh, one of my cooks told me, told me recently, he said, I love having two jobs because when one gets uh, a little bit tiring, I go to the next and I'm all recharged. And that's how it kind of is for me. Um, how far apart are the two restaurants? Just a couple miles. Okay. That's good. Yeah. Betalino's on the border of Torrance and Redondo. So then that just sits and reduces down. That sits, down. reduces. We're going to put a little bit of butter in there. Oh, everything's better with butter. It is. I agree, too. Now, this pasta dish you can find on our menu. Oh, great. It's one of the uh, biggest selling pasta dishes on our menu. That's some butter. We do put I'm a little, okay we with do, that. We do put a little butter in there. Yeah. That's more than one I don't serving. Scare of course, you, it's Maria. a Mar Well, that's a Maria serving that whole pa pot, that yes. whole pan. Oh, this is but. for you and I, yeah. I mean, a, a Greek and Italian <laughs> eating together. Yeah, when there's pasta involved. I did not grow up with red sauce. We grew really? up with burned butter and mazitra cheese layered on our pasta. It's amazing we're I, all still alive I, and don't have heart problems. I bet you guys did. Um, and, the, and the burning cheese on the plate and oh flying yeah. around. We didn't break what plates, it, though. What's the Italian thing? I mean, everyone's like, oh, Greeks We don't break, break plates. plates either. I don't yeah. know what the deal is with that. I, you know, I mean, It maybe, might be a regional thing, then, yeah. for, for the Greeks. Or maybe, uh, I don't want to say we're cheap, but why break a perfectly good plate? Exactly. <laughs> when you can eat a great meal like that's, this right on top of it. That's what I'm saying. All right, so that's bubbling. You still have it, have it pretty warm. And there comes the culinary school. That is one thing I love to cook, and I can cook. But the flipping in the pan, it would be all over it's the just, set. It's just practice. Practice yeah. makes perfect, basically, yeah. That's all right. It's getting done. Oh, this. Now, the sauce at this point is basically finished. You see how it's got that nice little See, the pasta is getting a little to color it. to it. And the, and the tomatoes. I've yeah. kind of melted into the sauce. The butter's melted into the sauce. I'm going to take it off the flame right now. Okay. I'm just going to wait for the hot. chicken to cook up. All and right. then we're going to go ahead and mix it all together. Plate it all up. All yeah. right. Well, while no. we're waiting for the chicken to cook, we're going to take a quick break. Wonderful. When we come back, we're going to taste all this Italian goodness, so don't go anywhere. Managing your energy bill is all about control. 
Knowing the difference between the two kinds of rate plans that Southern California Edison is offering is the key to unlocking that control. To pick the best option for you, it's important to know that one kind of plan is about how much electricity you use, and the others are about how much and when you use it. My job requires me to work from home, so avoiding electricity use during the daytime is not in the cards. That's why it made sense to stick with a standard residential rate plan, which is a tiered rate plan. The tiered rate plan starts over every billing period and begins at the first tier. The first tier covers the essentials like lighting, cooking, heating, and refrigeration. Once you exceed the energy allocated for tier one, you move to the next higher tier, which has a higher rate. This makes it easier to manage how much energy we're using on a monthly basis. And there are great tools to help us conserve or cut back if needed to avoid getting into the next tier where the rates are higher. My days are a little different. You see, I'm out the door by 8 a.m. and I don't get home until 6. And that's on a good traffic day. Before I leave, I make sure everything is off. Except for a fan that I keep on for Rambo. A time of use rate plan works for me because I don't use a lot of electricity during the weekday afternoons and early evenings, the time of day when electricity costs are the highest. I can put off using any appliances until after those times or until the weekend. I have flexibility because I can choose when I use. Understanding just how much or how much and when you use electricity is the first step to taking control of your energy bill and, and finding, finding the, the rate, rate plan, plan that, that works, works best, best for you. you. Welcome back. All right, we have everything plated up. The bruschetta pomodoro. Yes. And the asparagi, the penne asparagi. I just very, like to very good. say yeah, that. Kind of rolls off your tongue, doesn't uh, it? With chicken, and I want to just comment the bruschetta. You kind of put it just in the middle. Yes, we put it in the middle. I don't like to hit the sides too much, but yep. it, it kind of has a nice little touch when you bite into it. I made you do that so I could taste it. Mmm. The garlic, the basil. That bread is awesome too. That bread good. Okay, that is lovely. I'll even let you share in on your creation oh, here. You. A bite of chicken, maybe a little asparagi. Look at that bite. Okay, that. You're right, the noodles mixing the sauce with it. You can even see it on the noodles even more. It's an amazing tip. You could just eat it with the noodles if you wanted to, really, because mm. it's flavorful. Okay, both so simple, fresh ingredients from our farmer's market. So awesome. Thank you. Thank you for coming in. Well, so, thanks for having me. Catano's is your family restaurant that's been around forever. Yep. And? Betalino Kitchen. Betalino Kitchen. Opened both, in 2015. Both in the South Bay. I encourage you to make these at home. Go visit Vince, his parents, the whole family. Yep. It'll be like one big happy family. That's how we like to envision it. <laughs> I love it. Thanks, Maria. On behalf of the entire crew, myself, and of course, Vince, thank you for joining us again. Make these at home. And remember, we have such great chefs right here in our own community. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time on Community Cooking. If you'd like a copy of the recipe seen on this show, send us a self-addressed stamped envelope to the Office of Cable and Community Relations. That's 3350 Civic Center Drive, Suite 200, in Torrance, California, 90503. Be sure to note the show number displayed on the screen. And don't forget, you can find all the fresh ingredients used on today's show at the Farmer's Market. Visit the one here in Torrance at Wilson Park. That's located at 2200 Crenshaw Boulevard. They're open every Tuesday and Saturday from 
from 8 a.m. until 1 p.m., rain or shine. And if you'd like to be a guest on our show, email us at communitycooking at torrentca.gov and check us out online at youtube.com slash torrentcitycable and like us on Facebook at Community Cooking TV.